Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Daily Readings Training with Travis. Here we go on uh, the second episode here, if you will, if you don't mind that old term. This one's called The Mind. Again, we're going to do the readings. This comes from Maharaji in the 18, uh, 1800s, and we're going to do an interpretation about how the mind is actually perceived in the world. Here's the opening dialogue for that. As long as the mind is here, your body and your world are there. Your world is mind-made, subjective, enclosed within the mind, fragmentary, temporary, personal, and hanging on the thread of a memory. Now, you've heard us say this a lot of times over here in Architecting that the conscious mind in and of itself, which is what you're listening to me with this video right now, doesn't really reside in the now. It always resides in the past, meaning the memory in and of itself, or it, it resides in an imaginary future that it creates. Now, you can look at those things from an emotional structure. As example, you can look at the past as always going to look from that memory which means it's always going to be reliving the experience as the experience was perceived, not necessarily how the experience happened. Because again, as Maharaji is saying here, your world is mind made. The world in and of itself is just a blank canvas. How you choose to paint that as the architect that you are, or at least are becoming, well, that's where the memory comes in. So the event itself versus your perception of that memory or the presumption of that event is going to be the canvas by which you continue to replay the memory. Conversely, when we start to worry about the future, we create anxiety, we create worlds, and then we play them through as though they're actually happening, yet they're not happening. In fact, most of your anxiety, most of your stress, most of your worry or concern are over future events or experiences that most likely won't ever occur. But because your brain is so good at creating this mind-made world, those events and those experiences become so real, so palatable, so experiential that you'll sweat, you'll stress, you'll lose or gain weight over it, you, your eating habits might change. Everything changes because your mind makes the world real and thus the experience internally or subjectively becomes real. And from there, of course, then you convert that, and if you're really good, you'll convert that into a quote-unquote experienced memory, even though it was never an experienced memory, and you'll play it over and over again. So it further validates that the mind is constantly moving between past and future, right? And more importantly, that means we're moving through our life in this kind of self-hypnotic daze and not really being aware of our own journey, being aware of our true emotional experiences coming from where our, our heart resides and what we really, really want. But we're always constantly putting this film and this canvas layer of how we're perceiving the world. So let's dive into the, this reading of how the questioner and Maharaji deal with the mind. Questioner. There are very interesting books written, apparently, by very competent people in which the illusoriness of the world is denied. Through its, uh, uh, Though it is not its... Uh, Transitoriness, according to them, there exists a hierarchy of beings from the lowest to the highest, and on each level of complexity of the organism enables and reflects the depth, breadth, and inconsistencies of consciousness without any visible or knowable culmination. One law supreme rules throughout, evolution of forms for the growth and enrichment of consciousness and manifestation of its infinite potentialities. That's some heady shit, isn't it? <laughs> All right, Maharaji responds, this may or may not be so. Even if it is so, it is only a form from the mind's point of view. But in fact, the entire universe exists only in consciousness. What I have my, um, what I have my stand in the absolute, the pure being consciousness arises. In consciousness, the world appears and disappears. All there is, is me. All there is, is mine. Before all beginnings and after all endings, I am. All has, begin, uh, all has its beginning in me and the I am that shines in every living being. Even not being is unthinkable without me. Whatever happens, I must, there, I must be there to witness it. Questioner. Who do you deny, why do you deny being, in, being to the world? I do not negate the world. I see it as appearing in consciousness, which is the totality of the known in the immensity of the unknown. What begins and ends is mere appearance. The world can be said to appear, but not be. The appearance may last long, very long on some scale of time, but be very short on another. But ultimately, it comes to the same. Whatever is time bound is momentary and has no reality. Questioner. 
Surely you see the actual world as it surrounds you. You seem to behave quite normally. Maharaji, that is how it appears to you. What is your... What in your case occupies the entire field of consciousness is a mere speck in mine. The world lasts but for a moment. It is your memory that makes you think that the world continues. Myself, I don't live by memory. I see the world as it is, momentarily appearance in consciousness. In your consciousness? All idea of me and mine, even of I am, is consciousness is then your absolute being unconsciousness. The idea of unconsciousness exists in consciousness only. Then how do you know that you are in a supreme state? Because I am in it. I am in the only natural state. Can you describe it? Only by negation. Uncaused, independent, unrelated, undivided, uncomposed, unshakable, unquestionable, and unreachable, unreachable by effort. Every positive definition is from memory and therefore inapplicable. And yet my state is supreme, supremely actual, and therefore possible, realizable, attainable. Are you not immersed timelessly in an abstraction? Abstraction is a mental and, and verbal and disappears in sleep or swoon. It reappears in time. I am in my own state, timelessly, in the now. Past and future are only the, in the mind only. I am now. The world too is now. Which world? The world around us. It is your world you have in mind, not mine. What do you know of me? When even my talk with you is in your world only, you have no reason to believe that my world is identical to yours. My world is real, true as it is perceived, while your world appears and disappears according to the state of mind. Your world is something alien, and you're afraid of it. My world is myself, and I am at home. If you are in the world, how can you be conscious of it? Is it not, subject, is it not the subject of consciousness different from its ob ob object? Consciousness and the world appear and disappear together. Hence, they are two aspects of the same state. In sleep, I am not, and the world continues. How do you know? On waking up, I come to know. My memory tells me. Memory is in the mind. The mind continues in sleep. It is partly in, in obeyance, but in its world picture is not affected. As long as the mind is there, your body and your world are there. Your world is mind-made, subjective, enclosed within the mind, fragmentary, temporary, personal, and hanging on the thread of a memory. So is yours. Oh no, I live in the world of realities. Well, yours is of imaginings. Your world is personal, private, un unshareable, and intimately your own. No one can enter it. See as you see, hear as you hear, and feel your emotions and think your thoughts. In your world, you are truly alone. Enclosed by your ever-changing dream, which you take for life. My world is an open world common to all, accessible to all. In my world, there is a community, insight, love, real quality. The individual is the total. The totality is in the individual. All are one, and one is all. Is your world full of things and people as is mine? No, it is full of myself. But do you see and hear as we do? Yes, I appear to hear and see and talk and act, but to me, it is just happenings. As to you, digestion or perspiration happens. The body-mind machine looks after it, but leaves me out of it. Just as you do not need to worry about growing hair, so do I not need to worry about words and actions. They just happen and leave me unconcerned, for in my world, nothing ever goes wrong. Now, if you listen to that conversation, fam, what Maharaji is inviting the questioner to look at is that everyone is creating a mind-made world. We create our own world. And think about this for yourself. As you look around the world and you go throughout your day-to-day, -day, just wander and wonder at the same time about how you're in your own little world. You're thinking thoughts. You're perceiving what's going on around you. You're judging how that's going on around you, judging yourself what's going on inside of you. And yet no one can get inside that world, even if you describe it to them, even as the Maharaji says. 
It comes and goes. It appears moment to moment. And it changes with the state of mind. The only person that's really involved in that world is you. Now, we make the perception because it is a time movable thing, meaning I'm born, I have adolescence, I grow into adulthood, I go into maturity, and then I move into decline. We call that movement of time and life, and therefore things are moving. But that's a perception of our own creation that that time sequence means that the rest of the universe outside of our mind-made creation is moving at the exact same time sequence. But we really don't know that, do we? In fact, we don't really know what eons mean. We don't know how long the solar system has really been here. We're guessing. We're doing that as some sort of sense of control because our mind is seeking to create a world that it understands. What Maharaji is backing us into is the concept of being. So here's a great example. You know, the ocean that's right outside the window here for me is something that we've talked about before in other videos, but in this particular one, I'll bring it up again as a metaphor for what's going on as we perceive the world mind-made and as the world is actually happening, maybe subconscious or unconscious. So as you look at the ocean, you see the waves coming and going. Some waves are bigger than others. Some are smaller than others. Some are more violent in their crashing. Some are very gentle in their movement. It's just a part of the ebb and flow. Maharaji is inviting us to look at from the perspective of it's just happenings. It's just a moment to moment thing. But the ocean in and of itself is constant. It doesn't become sand. It doesn't become a desert. It doesn't become sky. It's still ocean. Just because it has movement from moment to moment doesn't change its essence of being. Whereas with us, so too are we. We have waves of emotion. We have anger. We have guilt, we have sadness, we have hurt, we have joy, we have bliss, and these waves come and go subject to the state of our mind. It changes how we believe our being to be, yet just letting them go through like the waves of the ocean and not allowing it to change our being. But what we do and what Maharaji is asking us to do is to put those two things together and say, time out. Notice that the waves are coming all by themselves, but what's going on underneath is always constant. You are always the architect. You are the creator of your journey. Look forward to talking to you tomorrow. If you want more information on how to continue to jump into your own life, you can check out first your passion test. Go to travisfox.net forward slash passion test. Find out where your passion lies within and then jump into your life into the jump training. It's seven bucks. Take a journey on it. Why not? Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Architect out. Bye-bye.